I'm here today with Francis Carpenter. This is his property that he's had for how long have you been here? Here, 60 plus years. And your original house was here that and burned right, down, right? Original house is right where the where the mobile home is now, and it burned down yet. What year was that? The year it burnt. Again, you waited too long, too old to remember. <laughs> it burnt in about 1966, I believe. And the shop has been here for how long? Well, the little shop was there at that time when the house burned. This has just been expanded on it. And I uh, add a little now and then when I uh, felt the need for something, mainly roof cover. And these these tracks right here, Bart, what, so, so tell me about the, your, well, the train that used to be here. What, what happened with the train I had three grandkids right over the hill within walking distance, two more grandkids over the hill that way within walking distance. So I decided to put in a track in the little push car. And if you look behind you, see that little, oh, right down, yeah. see that little yep. car? Yep. That fits on this track. You can put a couple kids on it and they can push one another around. And when the mess is all cleaned up, why you go all the way around the house. It's a complete circle. Wow. Go and that's there's a side track if you look at it right. There's a switch right there. Uh, without committing myself to too many sins. Uh, the track came from everywhere. And you built it, right? I, I I bought it. Yeah, what I did what what I did, the various old mines have a piece or two of track here and there thrown away and left. I just brought it home and uh, used it. So they're out of gold mines? Gold mines. Wow. This involves gold mines such as uh, the Boulder Mine down the road here. And uh, down on, we owned some property on the river and right next to it was some BLM which had a mine on it. And uh, when these old timers left, most of them just, <coughs> excuse me, most of them just left most things, you know. Or cars are gone for the obvious reason. It's worth some money and somebody likes them. But they didn't take track, so I, this all represents track I picked up. And when track doesn't suit you, but weld it, put it together and weld it. Wow. You can extend this track. A lot of this has been welded on, extended. And uh, anyway. Yeah, yeah, it, some lucky grandkids. So these, are, so these are all, this is all out of gold mines. The, yeah, the track. right. All, That's all, amazing. All out of local gold mines. Oh, yeah. And my, uh, my grandkids had a lot, a lot of, you know, a lot of fun. They lived close enough. They lived in the house there. And then they lived down there with the, with the boy lived. And any time the grandkids wanted to go see grandparents, all they did is ask permission. They could walk up here. So you had them all the time. Not or, all the, lots of time. And uh, they could play with the track. It was good, David. Tell, tell us about this, this, this the old Dodge over here. Well, there isn't much to tell about the Dodge. It's a 1923 Dodge. <coughs> it was running when I parked it. It's not running now. My brother, my brother acquired it uh, somewhere. The story is it came out of Nevada. Belonged to some Indians, and anyway, he acquired it, and I acquired it from him. And then, if you look back a little further, there's a Model A pickup. Yeah. A, what what a year is that? A 1927 Model A. Oh, wow. Model A pickup, and that legally belongs to my niece. One of my brother's uh, daughters, and we haven't been running it much lately. I, you know, not doing much of anything lately. Does it does it and run that's still? That's a good running. That's a good running condition model A. Put a battery in it. Put some gas in it. That's it. <laughs> and so I, I see this. Is, is this from the rescue post office? This is the first. Personal mailboxes 
from the rescue post office. Wow. They, uh, when they remodeled the post office, those were too small and they got rid of them. Like, is this a little the plow? Place. Is this a plow up here? That, no, that's off a buggy. A buggy? Buggy, that's a single horse. You see, you bought, you put one horse between them. That's a tongue for a buggy. Uh, if you look overhead, right here, there, there's a tongue out of a big wagon. Oh, you, yeah. you put a horse yeah. on each side, see, and you run it. Okay, this little one you're looking at, you put a single horse in there for a buggy. And <coughs> this is all stuff that, this survived across the road at the place where my brother lived right across the road. And actually, all this is part of that. And it's got a lot of detail and whatever and history in it. But Did you, uh, so you used to tell us stories about how the, you had a, a milkman and a vegetable man coming up Green Valley Road. Ah, uh -huh. I wish I had a picture of it. In, in the old days, we had a vegetable, well, there were several, of course. We had a vegetable man. The only name I know him by is the Chinaman. Uh -huh. uh, I had his name, and I believe the truth is, I have his name written down in there. Isla Wing knew his name, and there's a lady on Deer Valley knew his name. But when you ask him his name, his English was very poor. He would say, me Chinaman. <laughs> he was very happy with that. But anyway, he had a, I think he had several vehicles. The most popular, boy, I wish I could find a picture of it, but I won't. He had a Dodge screen side. Dodge, Dodge made ones like this, and the whole back from the seat back had a screen box built on. Came from the factory that way. <coughs> they were beautiful. And sometimes you had a screen side, screen side Dodge, and sometimes you had a Model T, and he came once a week, and he just pulled up to your house and stopped and beeped and got you out there and whatever you want, you know, you bought. And, and that's uh, fresh vegetables. Fresh vegetables. We're, we're talking right. We're talking fresh vegetables. Yeah, mostly stuff that was probably picked that night, you know, during the day. And uh, he didn't go much further in here uh, because there weren't too many. You got to realize there aren't many houses in this country in the old days, boy. It, it, I uh, heard they used to raise uh, chickens and pigs up. A lot of chickens. Is that correct? We raised chickens. Well, the family raised chickens. What my father figured out about the time World War II started, there'd be a big interest in chickens. So we raised, we had about a thousand laying hens. White leghorns they were. <coughs> Excuse me. And we belonged to a group called the Poultry Producers in Sacramento. And they would always take your eggs and pay market price. You know, we didn't have to worry about not getting rid of your eggs. And they were taken down once a week. When, when I was a young kid, my dad went down. And then later on, there's one of the bear camps started a little run, and he'd take them down. But you can imagine a thousand chickens while we get a lot of eggs in the course of a... What'd they charge for eggs back then? What was a dozen eggs? Don't remember the price, good Lord. <laughs> well, I don't think we ever bought an egg, if you me. That's the reason I don't know. But uh, we, we had a thousand chickens plus uh, probably another hundred running around uh, of, you know, other things, dark ones and white ones and one thing and another. We also uh, would uh, raise friars. When, when, when you got ready to raise chickens, you could buy baby chickens hatched. You could buy them sexed. When we got our hens laying hens, uh, they, they guarantee you about 95% female. You follow me? Mm -hmm. No roosters in. No there. roosters. And then if you wanted to buy roosters to raise and sell, which we did occasionally in, in, in the summer, 
why uh, you could buy them that way. We did that too. We buy 50 or so. And the old house was right on the road and people just stopped and want to, <coughs> excuse me, want to, want a chicken. And uh, heck, us kids were capable of selling them. You, uh, you put him in a gunny sack, poked the hole, put his head out, and collected your money, and they went on their way with. So you remember how much he charged for the chickens back then? Oh yeah, when you, I don't, I don't have any idea. <laughs> no, it was pretty cheap, I tell you. So was that was that on this property, Carp? The now that was on the property across from the firehouse by the store at Red. Okay. All that was there, the old house. The big old house, which, uh, by the way, I was looking last night at us tearing it down, good Lord, brought tears on. So that's over. where Billy Weber's barn was, the big barn. Well, yeah, the barn was always there that way. And the house was right down on the road where that little opening is there. Uh, you go to the rescue church, property, whatever, right across from the Baptist church mm, with okay. the house, the old okay. house. Again. And did that burn down as and, well? No, we tore it down because it was falling down. You know, it was a gold rush. It probably built in 1850 or something like that. And we hadn't done probably too much maintenance on it. And uh, anyway, we brought my mom in a mobile home there, set up in back there, and uh, finally decided the house was a you know, menace and danger, and tore it down. And uh, we had a, another chicken pen there. In fact, we had a couple more sheds there that don't show up. And, uh, but like I said, in the old days, there weren't you know too many people at homes here. You can imagine the county paved the road to our front porch. Blacktop, the road to our front porch. Raising kids there and one thing like that, no problem. We never had a problem with cars and things. Of course, didn't see many, but uh, anyway, we raised chickens. We had about a dozen milk cows. We shipped cream. Ooh. You ship milk, you need refrigeration, you move it every day. Ship cream once a week, put it in a can, give it a little protection. If cream soured, you could sell sour, sour cream. Just went for a cent or two less a pound. <laughs> and uh, uh, then sweet cream. And the same thing, uh, the uh, outfit in Sacramento was the old Crystal Creamery. I guess Crystal Creamery is still around. Yep. Okay, we sold our butter to Crystal Creamery. What you did, you took your eggs in the poultry producers, which was down lower end of Broadway, and then the Crystal Creamery was over so you took. And, and the same with the milk, you took it down once a week, you set it on the deal, they marked it, weighed it, and you were paid. And the eggs, they take the eggs by crate. They check the eggs on you, though. I, 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 I shake my head and marvel at that. I think they opened every crate of eggs. Did see if they're cracked? See if they're cracked, see if they're dirty. And uh, also, uh, don't ship no brown eggs in with the white. You could sell the browns, but they want them separated. Browns, cracked, oversized, you know, the double yolk, uh, all went, it's commercial. And all they were really interested in was a good-looking, clean, medium-sized white, white egg where they could sell, repackage and sell. Now on the, on, on the chicken, who'd buy the chicken? Anybody and everybody. I'll tell you one of the better CDF uh, customers was CDF, California Department of Forestry. You could always sell CDF a dozen or so chicken, frying chickens, right? I found out about the sad story later. CDF buy a dozen of them. The big boy come by, buy a dozen of them. We get a state check for it later, of course. And uh, the poor firefighters had to 
Skin them. Had to skin them, clean them. Yeah. Ha ha. I never had that happen to me, luckily. Only thing I ever did was CDF. CDF would take roadkill deers. Mm. That's the first thing they knew about me when I went to work for CDF. You could hand me a deer and say, skin it, gut it, hang it up, and I would do it. You knew how to do I it then? I knew how to do it. I wouldn't could. In fact, I did that in later years on the north side. All the time. All them orchards? Oh, Lord. A lot of, weighed a lot of venison. And uh, they're pretty popular. You know, orchard kill, there's no time frame. Yeah. Hmm. Work it so on duty. This this chair over here, Carp, where'd that come from? That's an old H one. History, they're unproved. I think that's known as a, what is it? A captain's chair or a boatswain's chair? It belonged to a gentleman named Jake Egger, the way to describe Jake Egger, they lived at, you know where Jurgens Road crosses Weber Creek? Of course, yep. Get where Jurgens crosses Weber Creek. That was the Egger place, or Egger place. Yeah, Egger place, Jake Egger. They're Egger and they stay there. Anyway, they, uh, I got this because when Jake got to be in it, Old man, they moved him. One of my uncles moved him up to the little room in the ranch to live his last few years so he wouldn't be alone and he brought the chair with him. That go. I uh, was always gonna, you see that paint on there, my some of my aunts, bless their pointed head, they make me a little unhappy. Look at that. One time the whole Luneman Ranch was green slime. But uh oh, that's okay. So anyway, that was old Jake Eggers chair and when we were kids we were, I remember old Jake used to sit in it out on a porch when we went You think there. it's uh, did they make it? Is it handmade or was it imported from somewhere or? the what? Was it imported? Did they was it built in a different country? No, or was it just, no, they no. Built it? Guess what you see is what you see. That's yeah, beautiful. Yeah, I uh, had to watch it and hang on to that thing. <laughs> so, what else you got out here that that we could uh, that's got some history? Well, got a lot of deer horns. Deer horns represent. A bunch of my fathers, we, we always just collected deer horns, we never threw a deer horn. A bunch of my fathers, a bunch of my Uncle Bill who lived across the road, and my kid Bills are here. By the way, I did not get all of them by far from across the road. There were another, I don't know, bunch more. But, uh, they're mostly local there, though. We got a few. I I shot a few of these in Nevada. We shot a few in uh, Montana. Uh, How it, about all these old? Huh? All these old cans. Where are they? What are they? Are they oil cans or? Th those are kerosene. Kerosene. Designed for kerosene for your for your kerosene light. Yeah, you could use them for anything. But that's why I have them. They came from the store at Rescue, a couple of them there. And uh, like I say, you could uh, buy a gallon of kerosene and you got a little pour you could pour it in. Do you there. still have one of the kerosene lanterns somewhere? I don't think I have anything kerosene left. Oh, there might be one in here. There's one in there. An Assayer's stamp mill. This came from the Jargon's mine. I hesitate, I hesitate to go into too much more detail, but that arrived here a few years ago. 
one of the last things, like I say, the Jurgens mined down on, you know, on, on Weber Creek. So it, it was used to uh, crush rock what, to get what, what, Yeah, what, did I, what, what the assayer did, he put small amounts of rock in there and crushed it. You've seen the big stamp mill. Yeah, yeah. Well, they stamp the mill for gold and take it out and save it. But this was for the assayer. You bring bring assayer, you got a new claim, you bring in a bucket of sack of ore and ask, what's it worth? And this is what he would use. So small. Yeah, and, just and put a little rock. Put, put a little rock in here, and you crush it, and then of course he would take and pan it and weigh it, you know, and see what they could see do. what kind of yeah. What kind and of this or see it had a motor on it, electric motor. Oh, okay. This is a later edition, of course. So the, what's the big ball? I don't remember. Does it come down? Do you lift it up? Oh. Oh yeah, there. So maybe that's a. I it, think this is some kind of weight then to front. I tell crush. you what that was. Yeah, I think that was a. I never paid much attention to this. This got dropped off here. I was very thankful, glad to see it. But uh, that's probably the crusher. I'm guessing. Yeah, this is just this, this <laughs> some kind of stamp. Undoubtedly or... dropped it. Yes, yeah. my mother's. Family ran several hundred head of cattle. Always. What happened to cow? Bells? It still what worked. To cow bells is the same thing. They disappear about as fast as you can pick them up. It's for example the Brandon iron for the Linderman Ranch. Linderman Ranch was two thousand acres. Right. And. A ranch here and a ranch on the Pilot Hill side, which meant they had Brandon and I in both places and whatever. I found one Brandon and I in the whole bunch. I only have one. All the rest of them were. <laughs> Does it have a L? They beat, they beat me. Does it have an L on it? A Luneman? What, what was the name <laughs> of the L. ranch? CL. Yeah. CL and that's a phony. You try to figure out who the hell is CL. And then is this a, a sluice box here? That's a true sluice box. Yeah. Oh yeah, yes. Hell, he used that in a creek. He go to, go to my, my brother's house and go down into the creek. He took out hundreds and hundreds of dollars worth of gold. And never said a word. My brother was up to the time he got to where he couldn't work. He was he was taking out an ounce or two every winter. He just go down there and. As soon as it was rain, slow down, put that box back in the creek. And... This box right here? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. Uh -huh. He had another one, but that's the one I got, only one I got. So This is the weight for it. I don't know which one it matches. Well, see what you do. Here's a good example. You see, see how this got that hook there? Well, you, you put your... You put your load on here, and then you took this with that deal up top and put it out here and told you how many pounds you had. So These, these are shoe uh, leather. Shoe horn cobblers. Yeah, the cobblers tool. Yeah, about half these are gone. The family got well, We had all that stuff. My, uh, between my grandfather and my great-grandfather, my grandpa and the great grandfather, they did a little of everything. That uh, great grandfather ran a store and shingle with a medical doctor to start with. And he also got involved with the pyramid mine over here. Oh, he was a promoter. Good description of mm. great grandpa. But anyway, yeah, out of the, between the, Great grandpa brought everything to the rescue store when he came. And when he passed away, of course, my grandfather was there running the store. And the grandfather had some stuff. And, uh, well, yeah, in the old days, you take a pair of regular leather shoes and you try to put a resole on them, you know. Mm -hmm. And you can nail the sole back on with these. 
and uh, of course if you got a shoe that was made with nails and got a nail poking you in your foot, why you slipped it on one of these horns here and found the spot, took a hammer and beat it from the outside and pretty soon you beat the nail down and you in pretty good shape. I don't have a wheel story. That wheel happened to come from the Dallas Oregon. Les Cooney brought it down for me. Oh. No, no, buggy. This would be this would be a normal uh, back wheel. This would be the back wheel, see? With smaller wheels in front, bigger wheels in back. But anyway, Les Cooney brought this down for me one time. Is Les is Les still still around? Yeah. Les been gone for several years. You have pictures of everything. Before, before computers, those lights are all burned out. Before computers, I was into old-fashioned photography. When I was a kid, I taught myself to develop film. You know, you only had the Verichrome and a couple of those. None of the fancy stuff. So you had the trays and the... Trays, there's still trays around here. That's Francis Luneman, yeah. That's Grandpa Luneman, my grandpa. And that Grandma Luneman, the other picture right there, the lady, that's his wife, Grandma Luneman. My mother was the youngest of 15 kids. Luneman's. Born in a Luneman family, yeah. She's oh, a Luneman. Oh, yeah, that's where it came from, from yeah. your mother's side. Yeah, yeah, the Luneman's my mother's side. That side was the uh, post office. They came in, well, they uh, settled over in Greenstone, probably on what we call the Indian Reservation today. But anyway, Grandpa, Great Grandpa Carpenter uh, ran a store in Shingle. He published a newspaper in Shingle. This is my dad's side. And then when the rescue store come along, they got the chance. It's conflicting stories about it, but uh, they, they, they got offered to them, I think, and so they moved over here about, you know, the store up. Uh, post office opened 1895, so I figured they were here in 1894, and then they moved over here and stayed here, so. Shame the, the family don't find it quite so interesting, but it's the way it goes. And have you been collecting bullets for quite some time? <laughs> Do I what? You're collecting bullets? Oh yeah, I collect about anything of it. Oh, you ain't seen nothing yet. <laughs> Pictures from everywhere. So, uh... A lot of these are black and white on plain paper, though, or most of them are. Today I, I go for uh, photo paper, you know, and uh, these, but these, these are mostly black and white on plain paper. So. But whenever I got something, I, I just had the urge to. Mm -hmm. what, what is that thing on the door? This? This, this, isn't it, I don't know, what's it, is it a sun? Uh, go ahead. A corbel? No, it's nothing, it's a sunburst. Sunburst. Now, the house at Ponderosa and Green Valley Road was a sunrise house. 1877. The family purchased this, the Lunamans purchased this, in 1877, from the Sunrise House at Ponderosa and Green Valley. Oh, oh, Jake Ager was going out of the roadside business, so to speak. And uh, it should say more. $800. Or $8. $8. $8. $8. $8. <laughs> so they paid for it and left it. Come back and get it later with a wagon. 
Sunrise House set right as close to the road as you could get it at Ponderosa and Green Valley. As close as you could get it. And was it a hotel or a boarding house or roadhouse? Roadhouse. Yeah. Can you see this here? Original photos. That that pine of grand up in the woods. Here, set that down here if you want to. Get this later. That's Pineal Grand. You go to Camino, you go to Camino, and then you go out. See, they all work there. Well, you get some originals here. Well, there's the old RSLS. Hey, here's an original RSLS. Uh, 1921. Oh, who knows? I got some original. Uh-oh. Well, who's that? Their name am Carpenter. Those are my great aunts. Myra and Mina Carpenter. And that's an original photo, huh? That's an original. <laughs> that's Grandma Carpenter. That's Mary. Uh... Gee whiz, I hate this memory. Turnbow. Turnbow's in Turnbow. Colorado? Yeah. Turnbow's. Mm -hmm. My grandma was a Turnbow. See, here you get more of them. That's a Cleffer. Don't know who those people are offhand. Those are amazing photos. But see, this came from when I... Boy, this memory crap is poor. Well, you look at. I'm I don't so know. glad you saved these. They're this incredible is, photos. Can you see these? Uh, are they, so are these? Uh, some are relations. Some aren't. Most of these aren't relations. Here, you turn them and look at them. I, uh, I've looked at them once or twice before. <laughs> I bet. Yeah, this this is the Luneman. This is the Luneman stuff. When my uncle passed away, this is the stuff. The family, the Bay Area family hadn't already pirated. And I used that, that for them. Wow. These are these are you incredible see, photos. But they're they're photos without, you know, much meaning because you don't know in a lot of cases who they are. So I try to write their name on the back of anything I copy because I... Well, like here, so... You see, somebody did Garden, something there. Garden Valley, California. Okay. I don't know who that'd be. Presented to dear aunt and uncle and cousins from Carrie B. Alma. Garden Valley. Don't, don't ring. Yeah, these are just incredible oh. pictures. There's, There's Mira that, and that's Mina Carpenter. Yeah, that's one I took. See, that's mine and Myra. You you took this photo? I, I copied it. That's a copy oh, okay. of mine, yeah. No, no, they were long gone before I... Uh, what do we got here? Pineal Grand, the mill. This is the mill lot, Pineal Grand. Uh, uh, best, best way to describe it is go to... Go to Camino and then go out north to the woods. And see there, there's, I got an uncle in there. See they're all in love. Yeah. I got an uncle, Clifford. That's Pino Grand. This is all Pino. So. Well, these were loggers? Yeah, those are loggers. Let's see some. I think that would be Grandpa Luneman. They worked in the woods for years. Uh, but the, uh, that's, gra that's Grandpa Luneman. That's the yeah, this says Frank, Frank Luneman. Fred Luneman. Third, third person Fred from Luneman. the left. Yeah, Fred. First row. Fred would be in there. Okay. Right there. 
Uncle Fred. They all worked. My uncles and my great uncles all worked. About the only real place to make money would be the woods, by the ground. Yes. That's the steam, steam uh, engine, you know, for logging the logs. Pine oak. Yeah, they dra drag the logs out and load them with the steam engine. It's amazing that you have these pictures. Yeah, some of these are... Oh, look at they got a bear. Yeah, and the bear, bear got a trap on his foot. Bear come in raid the garbage can all the time, so they finally tagged his self. That's a big bear. Oh, there he is again. There is bear again. Wow. Oh yeah. I could spend all, all I could spend a month here, carp, looking at these pictures. Well, you can look at these photos anytime you want. So, I, uh, with another thing here, old postcards. Okay, I've got, I've got, I've thing. got old postcards coming out the, whatever. Carpenter's Place. What's that? 1960s Well, that's, rescue. that's the home place from the back side. That's the old house that you tore down. Yeah, that's the house we tore down, yeah. Okay. Yep. Hard to say what you got here. That's the sunrise house. Oh, was, that's the, the roadhouse. I was looking at the roadhouse. This is Green Valley. This is Ponderosa. I'll be done. And that. And that's sunburst, where this chest came look, from. Right here, it don't show. See, there's a mark right there. It's got a sunburst right there, and it's got one on the other side. <coughs> oh yeah. This guy. I uh, was no bachelor, and um, consequently, he. Uh, That's an amazing picture. This is the bridge between. Right at the bottom, just as you get the re rescue, this is coming down the hill, and this is the bridge, and rescue's right here. They're, they're building a new Green Valley Road bridge. Wow. And that wasn't the final one, that's one they're building though, but Look, another shot of it. Another shot of it, yeah. Now this No road bridge. This is the Ford walking. See see the see the Ford? This is a walking with see the Ford for cars? <coughs> this is a, a butcher shop. Hmm. And is this rescue? Right at rescue. Kelly Creek right House. at rescue, but a creek. As you come this way from rescue, this is the creek. Right out here at the Kelly Did creek. they drive the cars across the creek? Yes, no bridge. <laughs> they wait till the water went down. Okay. Chauncey Smith. That's a beautiful Harry house. Harry Quigg in the 50s. That was the original house. Oh, was, that's on CJ's property? Yeah. Right up, where, well, right, up near where C, right up near where CJ's house is. The other house was a rental. The one in back that people live in was a rental on the property. So. Wow. Mm -hmm. Lytton McDonald. Now, there, here's another shot of it in later times. See? I don't know what, why I put that in there. But see, there, there, there's a good shot of the house, the original house. That's downtown something. Helen? I don't know. The word Helen means that's one of my carpenter aunts. I don't know. Some, sometimes you can't tell. A lot of these, not a lot of them, some of these were borrowed pictures and I got pushed to get them back in a hurry. Bill Carpenter's barn. Yeah. Right down where Renee's mm -hmm. house is at barn. Oh, let's see something. Look at that car. What a great car. A lot of these are just pictures that came to me. You, you never pass never pass on a picture if you're gonna save this stuff. A 
That's them damn late picture. I gotta get straightened out here. Grandma, my father, Aunt Mina, Aunt Hazel, who died young, Uncle Bob, my Uncle Morris. Hmm. I'm getting lost in a couple. That's Uncle Bob. Anyway, I I have settled down and study them anymore. Sometimes. You're getting into uh Lunamans. That uh well, the big families. Uh uh. <laughs> Damn, I hate this short term memory catching hell. Starbuck Road. This is this is the uh I don't remember him. This is uh long gone this uh Humphreys. Oh Humphreys. Humphrey place, yeah. Well uh, Ed Humphrey, you know. Ed yep, Humphrey. I remember Ed. Yeah. yeah. Hopkins, Henry Rolfing, grandfather don't, don't, of Helen don't know. Fleming and Betty Humphrey. What did you say? This, this, I'm reading this one. Oh, oh, he oh, yeah. He was the grandfather of Henry Helen Rolfing. Fleming and Betty Humphrey. Okay, Rolfing, yeah. Skinner. So is that Skinner from Skinner, Skinner Lane? Skinner that, that is the lady, Annie Skinner. You recognize the airplane? Where's that? Take a good look. That's the RS Ellis. I hope he does. That's Green Valley Road then. It's on Deer Valley Road. Or Deer Valley Road, yeah. Hmm? Wow. Yeah, he lit up here in. Rancho Ponderosa before there were any houses. Don't recognize that. No, that. That is your some of your old postcards. Now what you getting into? Lake Tahoe Road. Where? Lake Tahoe Road, Fred's place. Oh. Fred's place was a roadhouse on the way to Tahoe. So that's the old Highway 50 then. Right on Highway 50, yeah. So, See, you're getting the end of postcards. They, they don't even put addresses on. They just put rescue. That's all you need. <laughs> how, how do you find them? You just go to the post office then, huh? Yeah, 1909. The rest of these are probably postcards. And if you like to look at postcards, you should sit down and look at them. A lot of them will have pictures, of course. They made a camera that had a negative the size of a postcard. My dad had one, and I had it when I was a kid to play with. It's 122 is the number. You took a picture, and then you bought photo paper for the size of the negative. Contact, you know, you, you, with photos you can enlarge or contact. We enlarge everything. But it was a contact print, and you made your postcard up and sent it on. Mm. I had the old camera for years. I love that they just, they just, they have no address. It's just the name and the city, or the town. There was only one other rescue in the United States, which, by the way, we uh, ran down. I have the history of it here somewhere. but Back east, and it folded up. Early in life, so look at the date on this book. Yeah, a, le a ledger book out of a fire, huh? Well, Carp, I appreciate your time today, and we'll look forward to doing this again sometime. Okay, you're a, you're a living history. I hope, I, I hope you got something yet. Of interest.